morning, hello, and good afternoon, and good morning, and good evening to those who will be watching our CPAM blog. My name is Rich Coleman. I'm the host for the program, as well as the Public Safety Community Coordinator for Pittsfield Townships, Department of Public Safety, and the blog post for the Crime Prevention Association of Michigan. Today, we are preparing for another wonderful session uh, with Ms. Kim Root, who is the office manager for the Office of School Safety, who's going to give us an overview of the workshop and the important grants and programs that they're working on to bring statewide that all of all of us and our departments working with our school resource officers and all of our local components how we can access the grants and the amazing programs that are being offered right now from your office. Kim, thank you so much for being with us today. Please share with us. Absolutely, and thank you for having me, Rich. I appreciate the opportunity, and I look forward to um, talking with your members at CPAM. Uh, it'll be my first time in attendance. Yes. Uh, the Office of School Safety was first developed by Michigan statute in 2018 and then funded in 2019. Um, just as we were getting up and running, um, COVID hit uh, yes. in March of 2020, as we know. And so that kind of put a pause on a lot of things. Um, but right now, um, we're very excited to be gearing up for many important programs. Uh, you touched on the grant program. I'll be talking some about behavioral threat, threat assessment training that we're doing throughout the state. Um, we house OK to Say within um, the Office of School Safety, the, the public facing version of OK mm -hmm. to Say. Um, and then we're also working on uh, training for school resource officers and working in cooperation with Michigan State University and Michigan Virtual University to develop training um, for school resource officers because uh, we know that that's a need. Uh, in the state in terms of how to uh, build those partnerships, build those relationships, and really get the most out of um, that work being done in school. So um, I'm, I'm happy to talk about all of those things, and those are things that I will touch on in my presentation as well. Fantastic. So when we talk about this particular office and the various components that are offered, and I think you touched on one of those that, that you wanted to really get a deep dive in and i'm really interested in the net mental health portion and how that works is that something connected to our schools with the law enforcement agencies and a lot of our communities now we have in washington county a grant that works with all of our agencies with mental health services and responding how is this different or is this a specific program for our schools so um, we talk about behavioral threat assessment and management um, as a prevention tool, um, being able to early on identify behaviors of concern um, among, uh, among school st uh, students. Um, and so it is really a process involving um, multi-disciplines. Um, in other words, a threat assessment team would include very often a teacher, a principal, a counselor, a mental health professional, and law enforcement, um, if, if necessary, so a, a school resource officer. And what we're trying to do is bring those sort of disparate pieces of information together so that um, if there are things that are concerning, we can address those behaviors and uh, provide intervention, mental health services, other types of services for um, those students who are exhibiting threatening behaviors um, and catch that before some, uh, something tragic happens. Um, the key really here is the fact that it's multidisciplinary. So it's not just the principal making the call. It's not just the teacher or the counselor or the school resource officers that, that each one of them brings something unique and special to the table. And so through these trainings that we're doing across Michigan in about 30 sites across Michigan, um, we're uh, teaching teams of people within schools that include school resource officers, how to build their team, how to build their process, how to execute their process with fidelity, and then how to manage that process going forward. Um, and these are free trainings. Uh, we're working with um, Sigma Ontic and Dr. Melissa Reeves, who is a renowned um, trainer 
-hmm. this area. And we're training on what we call the NTAC model. Um, and that's uh, the National Threat Assessment Model. Um, and that was first developed by the US Secret Service. And so it's a model that's evidence-based, data-driven, um, and proven. And so we're very excited. Our end game here is really to build capacity in the state of Michigan, because as we know, both in law enforcement and in schools, there's a lot of turnover. Yes. There's a lot of turnover. Yes, Those are tough jobs, both in law enforcement and in schools. And, you know, COVID didn't help that uh, very much. And so our, our goal here really is to build capacity and have um, Michigan school personnel and law enforcement be trained to develop and or to deliver training um, way beyond what the Michigan State Police will do um, in long after our grant and, uh, and our work in this area um, is done uh, initially. And so I didn't want to spend a ton of time on that, um, but it is important to note we have multiple trainings coming up. Those dates can be seen on our website um, and uh, we'll have the links live for folks to be able to register. Like I said, those are free trainings and we're really encouraging school districts to bring their entire threat assessment teams, which should include school resource officers. Excellent. So the schools then would apply to attend the meetings or would it come from law enforcement or? It would be the schools. It, so um, it would come. I mean, we have law enforcement uh, agencies who are signing up as well, um, and so that because what we what we know is, you know, a school resource officer might make the decision to be part of these threat assessment teams, but the chief in that law enforcement agency should also know what threat assessment is and what it is not. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's always a critical component. Um, but most likely what's going to happen is school districts will register their teams and the school resource officer is part of that team. Of team. So they get sure. registered through as part of that team. Um, and again, I'll share those dates uh, with uh, with the group uh, at the CPEM conference. Fantastic. Now, one of the things that's kind of a lead into uh, going forward from that initiative, uh, we've all been working with see something, say something, as well as okay to say, and really promoting that with our schools and throughout our communities and all of our neighborhood watch and community meetings so that parents understand what we're asking our students to do, but also when the students come home and talk to their parents, what do they do? Let's look at what this report for the, that's published for 2021. It has reported the behavior, but confidentially be able to provide a tip about um, a potential threat, about somebody who's looking to do self-harm, uh, bullying, um, somebody who may be contemplating um, taking their own life, obviously. Um, and so we really want to make this a resource um, for confidentially reporting those tips. And um, you had mentioned um, one, um, it gives some important statistics uh, about um, you know, the, the number of tips and the planned, uh, like you said, uh, the planned school attacks, um, the threats, uh, the other bullying, suicide threats, drugs, guns, cyberbullying, those types of things. Um, and so I will tell you that right now we are hiring additional presenters to go out into our schools um, to present uh, about okay to say what again what it is and what it is not how it's used how easily it is accessed um, and how important it is and again i draw the parallel between um, a partnership between school districts and law enforcement because sometimes the tips will go straight to law enforcement mm -hmm. sometimes they'll go straight to the school district but really the goal is to prevent harm um, and, and this is another prevention tool, a tool to give uh, kids or families or school personnel or law enforcement a place 
to really go to uh, report information of concern. Um, when I was, prior to my work here in the Office of School Safety, I was in a school safety role in Huron Valley Schools in Oakland County, okay. um, a large school district, about 8,000 students, about 15 buildings. And I was the okay to say contact there. And we took calls about this from the okay to say um, technicians 24 seven. Um, very often they were reported to us on a weekend where we could then do a, a well check on a student who might be contemplating, uh, again, sort of self-harm, taking their own life or um, who was experiencing bullying. <clears throat> and so I know that the tool works. Um, I've had firsthand experience with it and um, I can't say enough about <clears throat> the model program that it is. Certainly. And I think that that's, that's one of the things that it leads right into this information that's posted yeah. on the website and in the report regarding the tragic incident that happened in Oxford. And as you can see from your report that's published there at the website, and we're going to have the QR code for the <laughs> Office of School Safety that we'll be putting up as well. But if you can talk to us about this segment of the report, because this is still fresh on everyone's mind and we're all preparing for, you know, as we get through the school year and looking at trends, how do we make sure that we prepare for these spikes that we're seeing based on that incident? Yeah, that's a, a great question and a great lead and I appreciate that. So in the, <clears throat> in the weeks following Oxford, unfortunately, um, there was a, a tremendous spike, and you can see the numbers there. Um, 3,567 tips was an increase of 2,709% compared amazing. to those reported in December of 2020. And again, I was in here on Valley Schools, experienced uh, this uh, firsthand, where we actually shut down schools for two days uh, in here on Valley because of the number of copycat threats. Um, and obviously, as you know, right after Oxford, we were all um, on very high alert about yes. um, managing these threats. Um, we uh, we pursued them with law enforcement. We were very fortunate in Huron Valley, like I said, to, um, to have been able to, um, you know, sort of uh, de-escalate this, this, uh, these threats. But um, we were all on high alert okay to say was a absolutely critical post Oxford uh, in terms of uh, helping schools manage that information involving law enforcement and partnering um, with uh, each other to make sure that um, we, we weren't experiencing any other um, actual carried out threats like Oxford was. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think the thing too that, and we've shared this a lot with our community, uh, in publications, the the logos and the information of how to text the numbers to call, uh, right. the resources that are available at the site that can be shared in Twitter and all of the social media formats uh, for the students to use, but also uh, as parents would hear information from their from their children and show them something. What do they do? How do they report that information and get it right. into the right hands? That's so critically important. It absolutely is. And um, we make those materials very colorful for a reason. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we make them engaging. We have posters and T-shirts and lanyards and all kinds of materials that we distribute every day to school districts um, so that the OK to say, accessing OK to say is top of mind for students if they have concerns. Um, and in my experience uh, in Huron Valley, um, those were those most often came at the middle school level. Um, and so we know that, um, you know, middle schoolers, uh, um, you know, th that's a, a tough transition yes. from elementary to middle school and from middle school to high school. And so we're, we're very fortunate um, that, that the program gets accessed in the way that it does. Um, I did just want to clarify um, that the tips coming into OK to Say post Oxford were not Oxford per se, but they were from other school districts right. across the state. Um, there was no um, 
you know, it, it wasn't centrally located in Oakland County or in Washtenaw County where right. you're located. Right. It was literally from all over the state. Yeah, it was statewide. We saw a lot of that copycat uh, type of every, you know, almost every day. Uh, some school district was shutting down, uh, doing investigation regarding the the post or the emails that were sent or text messages in some social media format. Uh, so that uh, we, at every agency, we were investigating and making sure we did the necessaries. And, and when I have always spoken to students, I always tell them, when you press send, you've put it out there. You can't get it back. Right. And, and it's so important. And as we've talked with so many of our students, you know, about Internet safety and online responsibility, uh, that yeah. these types of things really play into. Don't think that it's funny to send something out because there are consequences. Well, and we both know yeah. social media has changed everything. Um, you know, when when I was in high school, um, you know, the, the, you know, it was you know the telephone game, but <laughs> social yes. media has obviously changed everything. It truly has. It truly has. Respond and where they get their information and how they interact. Um, and so, with that in mind, uh, you know, I'm grateful to hear that you're having those conversations uh, every day with kids. And that's, again, why this partnership between schools and law enforcement, local law enforcement is so critical. Um, And that is, I think, a great transition, if you will, for me Mm -hmm. to talk about our grant program um, that we're also very proud to administer. Um, So uh, with this current fiscal year, the uh, Michigan legislature has allocated $25 million uh, for grants to schools to increase the number of school resource officers in Michigan, which is a tremendous goal. Um, And we are proud as the Michigan State Police Office of School Safety to be able to administer this program. So this grant application is live right now on our website. Um, The uh, actual applications will come from school districts. There is a 50% match required. So uh, for example, if, if just to make the math simple, uh, if you receive a grant of $1,000, you have to match that with $1,000, and that would be used to cover um, the uh, compensation and benefits uh, for uh, for the school resource officer. Um, priority uh, will be given to those uh, schools or school districts that have never had a school resource officer because the goal here, as I said, is really to increase the number of school resource officers uh, in our schools. And so um, applications are due by November 17th. So um, if we have a law enforcement agency out there who's interested in partnering with their local school district to place a school resource officer, um, don't hesitate. Start that connection now. Um, and work closely with your school resource officer or your, uh, your, your, your current school resource officer or with your law enforcement agency to connect with that school district and get that application in um, because they, are, again, are due by uh, November 17th. 17th. Um, yep. And then we will be making awards uh, shortly after the first of the year. Yeah, just one month out. Just one yeah. month out. You know, yes. and that's exciting. We we have had a school resource officer at our high school that we feed into from our community at Saline High School, and uh, it's worked very well for us with resources, uh, working with the students and the staff. Uh, we work with the Ann Arbor schools and uh, Milan schools. These are all of the communities that Pittsfield Township feeds in. And we work with those local agencies that those school buildings are in to make sure right. that if we are in, can assist and participate and be part of anything that's going on, uh, that we will be able to do that with through the network and the resources. Excellent. 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 Now, here's another one that, we're, that I shared with you that I'm really interested in knowing more about, and that's the Blue Cross and Blue Shield plan. Stay, staying safe is being healthy. How important right. is this program with the Office of School Safety? Well, it's it's critically important. Um, you know, we're ha- we're happy that we have so many partners across the straight state, and Blue Cross Blue Shield has really been one of them that recognizes that you know mental health is part of overall health, and that um, we want healthy kids in Michigan, 
um, like every state does, but we really put an emphasis on it in Michigan. And part of that is working with community partners like um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, willing to invest and help promote okay to say uh, across Michigan. Um, and so they've just been a tremendous community partner featuring okay to say in their own materials, in their own promotions, um, and then um, really recognizing it for the asset that it is. Um, we um, absolutely rely on those relationships like Blue Cross Blue Shield, like with CPAM, quite frankly, mm -hmm. um, to do the work effectively because um, this this job of school safety does not belong to one organization yes. or one individual mm -hmm. in any community. It is a community effort. And the most successful, most, um, I, I think, uh, uh, beneficial relationships are happening um, where there are multiple partners involved. I totally agree. Uh, we've been at this for a while now. With I actually retired and came back to work part-time for the agency and have been an essential part of the Crime Prevention Association of Michigan, working with so many of our members across the state and encouraging them uh, well, to be a part of the networking. And that's what the conference has been so successful at, is networking with each other. And, and our goal has always been don't reinvent the wheel. And the information that we get from organizations such as yours and how we can foster this resource that is so important for our rural communities way up north in the UP and throughout the state of Michigan. Uh, this catalyst for us is so important to be able to, as we get this information and bring it back to our communities, but also share it at every level. So Kim, as we're preparing to close Give me just a couple more things that you would want us to make sure that we know about from your website. In addition to how can our members, as we get this information and we see the resources and the updates that are occurring on your website, how can we make sure that not only we get in touch with or have access to to work with our schools, but how important is the role that we have as we hear this information? Oh, it's absolutely critical, Rich. I, I can't emphasize it enough. Um, it's why we're investing in, um, I, I had mentioned uh, early on that we're investing in training for school resource officers because Michigan is one of very few states that doesn't have um, like mandated training for mm -hmm. um, school resource officers. But we do uh, work uh, closely with Michigan State University and Michigan Virtual University, and we're preparing a six module series um, that can be accessed virtually. Um, so online, um, we hope that that will be out by the first of the year. And it'll be critically important as replacing more school resource officers in yes. our communities. Um, that we have training because um, law enforcement professionals are trained, in, you know, in a certain way to be in their communities, but not necessarily trained to be in schools. And schools are unique, yes. um, you know, they're yes, they unique are. little communities of their own. And so um, we think helping set some standards for training uh, for school resource officers is also important. Um, and so between the behavioral threat assessment work, the grants, and then also the uh, the, the work with the uh, training components, um, we have a lot of resources available at, at, at the fingertips of your members. Um, you know, we are out and about um, speaking at multiple conferences. That's why I'm so grateful for being invited to CPAM. Um, uh, next week, I'm also on the same weekend at the Michigan Association of School Boards talking oh, about excellent. the resources that we have available and really trying to drive that partnership that I talked about where it's not just one, it's not just law enforcement, it's not just schools, right. it's mental health, it's business. It, we all have a role in this. And we touched on a lot of that uh, as we talked through um, the components of the okay to say program and then bringing it all together under the umbrella of what makes a safe community. Yeah, and the thing that's been important for us, because we have Alice, most of our personnel and agencies have gone through the Alice training and the update recently that was uh, provided. Uh, we had the crash program mm -hmm. similar to Alice that we actually did a training session several years ago 
uh, at the CPAM conference, which is where I got my certification that, you know, we, we run high fight that we use when we're working with businesses and all the other entities. So combining those programs uh, are so important because the central message is the same, you know, making sure that you protect, but do it at every level that individuals can understand how to be in, in their specific environment, how to protect it, but also how to protect themselves. Exactly. And those are principles, like you said, that apply across all of those trainings. Um, When I was in here on Valley, we first did Alice training and then we transitioned to run, hide, fight. But Mm -hmm. as you know, the principles are are the same. Yes, they are. Um, It's really just sort of what acronym are you using? Um, But one of the things I stressed uh, consistently in uh, the school district was these principles apply wherever you are. Yes, so, it, you know, if you're at the mall, you're at the movie theater, you're in a park, these same principles apply that you are using in your classroom to your personal life as well. And so I think that um, so much of this is um, how are we prepared? How are we, what are we doing to prevent um, harm in our communities? Yes. And then how are we coming together um, to make that um, messaging um, possible for all of us. I think that's 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 at the core of it right there. The message has to be consistent. So we all practice it, we all encourage it, but we're all making sure that we're on the same page. You know, and Absolutely. one of the things I, as I think about a couple of years ago, we had uh, a training with the National SRO organization oh, that came yeah, into Michigan. Nashville. And yeah. so that's something that with the new programs that are coming up, I'm sure that our, 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 our body would be interested in knowing more about com- getting the same resource information at anything that we do in the future uh, as far Absolutely. as any training for the SROs. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ken, thank you so much for being on the, the CPAM blog post and uh, the, the interview that we're doing here and sharing with our members. Uh, we're excited about the upcoming presentation and all of the things that we're going to learn, but we're also going to make sure that everybody gets access to uh, when they can go to the QR code with their camera to pull it up to go to your specific site to Excellent. get the information. Any last words before we go? I think I'm all set. Thanks, Rich. Thank you so much. We will see, see you, you soon. Too. All right. Bye-bye now.